Hi everybody. Wait, let me make sure I'm I got the name of the group right. Oh, Universal. Universal Soul. Universal Awakening. Yeah. Um I wanna try um I wanna try talking about something that I've been elaborating for some years uh, with this group and um, I tried different en environments, different Facebook environments to see what response I get. Most of the time I don't get any response. Um, but I've only recently started seeing um, so some interaction happen in this book, in this uh, group. I guess because I commented and liked a few things and now all of a sudden the algorithm started popping it up in my uh, no notifications. Okay, um, I don't really have a name for this. I kind of named it Gaia Humanism as a, as a school of thought, as a, as a, 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 com a completion theorem of um, a, a unifying theorem of uh, existential uh, comprehension um, called it Gaia Humanism I called it I don't know exactly uh, even how to introduce it because it it actually attempts to explain all um, logic behind all the stories and all the beliefs that we have about spirituality telling the stories of our existence and what God is and all the different scriptures and stuff and it, it kind of uh, brings it all together and yet independently explains through some kind of pragmatic um, ex um, realistic uh, you know explanation so I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try to see um, without making it too long, because I figure people will get bored after a while. So I'm gonna try to just cut it wherever I feel it's too long, and, and hopefully I'll get some responses from it. Um, the world societies have always wanted to know what the problem is. Why? Uh, why is there suffering and harm? Well, harm. You know, we should differentiate. Most of the true suffering, the one that it, it dignify and dignates, uh, uh, you know, that causes the most profound suffering is what we cause to each other, or killing of each other, wars, abandonment, neglect, indifference, and cruelty, and or, you know, the things that have to do with nature are bared differently, and usually they call people forth to unite and support each other. But where it starts getting uh, freakishly gruesome and cruel and strange and un, ins, un, insensible, where people start demonstrating that they disappoint you and what have you, usually has has to do with stuff that is things that are caused um, by each other, by neglect or by affliction. Um, can actually, and, and then of course to that we have the explanation uh, that, that come tries to chime in to the, the predicament of mankind with uh, stories of, of that we have become religions. Um, that, you know, for example, looking at Christianity, which is the only one I'm kind of versed with, uh, you know, man is born in sin and, and and um, you know, and if it's not this Catholic thing that you have to repent and and a, a, a acknowledge your 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 sin, there's always this suggestion that there's something wrong, that we failed, that we ruined uh, the dream time, and mankind is bad, and mankind has to try to become good, and you know, in spirituality, uh, Hindu and Buddhist spiritualities, uh, religions talk about paying for our, our uh, through karma and getting it wrong until we get it right through reincarnation and there's always this um, this um, this balance that we never 
that we seem to be born with. And uh, so I, I, I tend to just go back to Christianity because that's where I can probably use more elements to try to facilitate the explanation. Now, um, let's go to the beginning. The very beginning, which is answering the question, um, were we created? Is there a God? I think today we can, we can answer this question. We can look uh, outside our Earth, look at the universe, and just by sheer calculation of probability, uh, and taking only what we know, what we verify, what we can see and hear and and uh, witness, as the elements of practical or pragmatic verification that at least like us, at the very least like us, there must be uh, many other worlds somehow. Uh, let's just say that they haven't seen each other. They, they, they know of the other, okay, but um, taking it further, of course, it stands to reason that, um, you know, I actually saw this on a, a little a documentary that, that, that just hit it on the nail um, on one of the documentaries about astronomy that um, imagine if in the little time that our star has produced the extent of intelligence on this planet that it has, can you imagine a star that is a thousand times older with planets that have been stable and they call it, they, they refer to it as the Goldilocks area um, for longer periods of time, how much more life could have evolved um, and even considering all the all the different uh, probabilities of life sort of being like a fountain that rises and then gets to a point where it collapses again and starts over and maybe doesn't get past the ceiling uh, like the earth seems to demonstrate that we keep on producing new evolutions and, and they keep getting wiped out by different factors um, still the odds are that somewhere there's so many billions of probability of uh, uh, possibilities that there there must be lives that have uh, evolved thousands of times more advanced evolved than we are and if we only look at ourselves if we only look at ourselves and we see that already in such a short time, in, in just a, a blast that in which we have taken off these past hundred years, we're already tampering with DNA, creating other little beings in petri dishes and, and studying organisms and other planets. Imagine, we can only imagine just by looking at what we have done in communications in the last 50 years, for example where we might be in 200 years is almost unimaginable considering how quickly exponentially uh, sciences evolve upon themselves we discover something and that makes us that catapults a progress a development in science that we weren't even imagining or foreseeing going in that direction at all but because of something we invented so this whole explosion is happening as right now we see it we can we have the evidence ourselves we see it's happening so if that is the case on one planet um, we know that life exists much more I mean there are other ways of seeing communicating being aware we think that we are limited by the speed of light but we're really coming close to, to being able to maybe observe another world through other types of, um, you know, band waves, what do you call it? Um, wavelengths of uh, different types of new uh, frequencies of energy that maybe are um, a whole level of things that are uh, beyond light or within light that... Um, you know, we can't even, we can imagine and conceive their existence and possibility without really having a theorem of what the actual science of it might be. But we know the, we're starting to see 
the projection of possibilities in technologies and sciences that uh, fans out even to realms that we have no reason to imagine they should go just because so many doors are opening in places we didn't know would open before it tells us that so many more doors will open in places that we don't know where they will be but will be will happen because somewhere we'll discover things that uh, we weren't imagining would be discovered there and that will so we're starting to see the, a, pro, a, a possibility probability of intelligent life just by sheer statistical progression and therefore there's one conclusion that we can make and it is that at the very least without answering whether we were created uh, or not we are I can't I can't do a, a reflective form in this verb I've tried before but it's the only way I can say it is we are aware of um, and I know that in English you have to construct that phrase differently you have to say something like um, others or another intelligent is aware of our existence but we are known okay we are known by others by another that is a that must be a fact it's almost a certainty now if we can establish that um, what does that mean what would you do what would we do if we see immediately we would just watch them we would just look at them sit there and see what they do tomorrow no of course not so that takes us to the next conclusion is that we are definitely either uh, you know, run, manipulated, influenced, what have you, you know, operated, worked on, <laughs> you know, uh, um, involved by <laughs> them, or we are a cre their creation. Now, at this point, um, you would say to yourself, uh, following this progression of logic, um, well, why don't we know it? Why, you know, we have these books that say a whole bunch of stuff, God in heaven, but we really don't have like a phone somewhere we can, we can talk. Some people say they do, they travel and come back and then channel, but we don't really have a phone you know, to talk to our creators or the ones who are who, within, with whose, whose realm we are within, let's just say. Uh, there, which means there must be a reason for it or there is a reason for it <laughs> in other words if they don't want us it must be a conscious choice for us to not know them now that's that's the next step okay so we can conclude that there's a conscious intentional choice for us not knowing for us not being made aware and, and, and keeping us keep us keeping us guessing and sort of in, in the explorative discovery guessing uh, state you know um, hypo and, and especially now that we can do this scientifically and mathematically before we were just writing books of supposition and stories um, ignoring completely the idea of life on other worlds but now we can we can talk more um, tangibly about it uh, with with ideas that are concrete, and so we can affirm that it is intentional that we're not made, that we're not contacted with, that we're left alone. So, what could be the reasons for this? Um, well, the reasons that we can conclude are either because we need to be kept in a state so they can do uh, in a state of uh, unawareness so that they can do whatever they intend uh, us they, they have in, been intending always to continue doing with us um, or something else now the first one doesn't seem plausible because we're already getting to where we can affirm that they exist um, just by the level of intelligence that we're acquiring as a civilization so if they wanted to keep us in the dark so they can exploit us somehow uh, or use us or do something for their own services 
the world would be much would be at a level where we would continue to confabulate things that have nothing to do with any pragmatic realistic um, explanation uh, uh, that would verify the notion the idea that they do exist so we are if we are being allowed to discover them um, it must be intentional as well um, and at some point you think to yourself what about us I mean we keep thinking we want to answer this question is there a God is there life out there and pretty much this dissertation gives a um, you know a broad enough sheet of most likely uh, apparently um, uh, certain um, reality that would start satisfying that question enough to saying well that must mean enough to where we can now ask ourselves maybe they're actually looking at our freedom looking at you know what about uh, what do we do then and that is precisely what they want to see in other words what uh, where we start saying well if it seems that we're alone in a sense then and can we interpret being alone you know left alone to our own devices see what you do through your own means see what you come up with uh, state seems to be the case <laughs> and at which point we find ourselves again with each other on the planet and uh, with notions that we've already started chewing on like uh, free will for example that scriptures talk about um, and what is free will about and it talks in scripture it talks about uh, God's desire for us to live in free will because we're supposed to that way be good to him and it starts there's a whole bunch of stuff that now we find on earth as far as having been created in, in writing and literature that starts dealing with uh, this return point after going out there and answering the question and coming back to our well now what we have free will uh, you know nobody's ordering us nobody's keeping us in the dark because we are capable of knowing they exist um, and so what do we do now and so at this point there's a theorem that appears which is the uh, I don't know what to call it actually because I thought about it earlier and I didn't I didn't I couldn't come up with a name but it's sort of like uh, maybe somebody can help me with this because I, I it's almost like the um, the un, the disconnected you know what I keep thinking of I keep thinking of the movie Gravity where it was okay for the astronaut to not be tied to the spaceship the cre their creation was in fact for us to be okay not being uh, tethered to the to the station to the, sp the spaceship and so the theory means that um that this theorem means that we should be able to explain everything about why we have created and thought of the world and produced the narratives that we have as um, as a closed system as an explanation that need not say because of God because of creators or aliens uh, but because that is what because of how we are that is what we did without any necessity to um, to um, uh, make the final explanation God's will or no or uh, unknown which is what the world has been until today we still have this open non-answered question uh, where uh, we can no longer explain why we're bad to ourselves for example why we hurt ourselves why injustice occurs and why there's supposedly some are born evil and all this stuff there's like this area that in actuality is like a scar or a band-aid that like a lid that covers something that's would be open and we don't want it to be open so we we have this this attached uh, umbilical cord 
or, or, or black hole or something where uh, we can't explain exactly why the world is the way it is. And so instead, this theorem would, would, would say, well, no, we actually can explain why even why we created God because that's what this would mean it means that we created uh, a literature a cultural a social um, intellectual uh, knowledge or not, not knowledge but uh, let's just call it literature of the existence of creators and God and of course it would be almost sacred to suggest we came up with that or the bible is written by people uh not by god uh you know they would say <laughs> immediately blasphemous it was inspired by god you know through people and um and so nobody has really closed the whole perimeter to say well everything actually even why we started talking about god can be explained and um and this is how i explain it and this is also how i explain something that may have to do with creators that is not from this world and this would be the only thing that maybe we can say okay this is not from the closed system theorem that you're proposing but then you're saying that we were left with something that came from outside and, and it would only go as far as that but enough for us to understand again to be able to contain the self uh, self-contained uh, uh, explanation of ourselves and it is that just by looking at our our fellow animals around us we can see that we have an intelligence that is unusual unusually uh, different in one character not just that we're able to do sciences and build amazing engineering and everything and animals don't have they have baby little you know little <laughs> if we have an arm they have a little lump that would evolve to be an arm right uh, where beavers uh, uh, build dams you know while we go to Mars and so so it's there there's no separation but there's something that seems to have been uh, pushed really strong and the reason i say it was intentional to create such an enormous capacity of of uh, intelligent capacity in us is because it seems that it doesn't we don't harmonize with it we it's almost like something that's too large for us to handle because every other no other species really uh, is so self-destructive and so erring in its way. So, so you know, the, the, the comparisons are very, uh, are few and uh, very shallow. They, we can't go there too much. But we can stay in the argument by saying it doesn't seem strange that we would have an intelligence, which intelligence, the main purpose of life, is to further itself and so the 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 species the creature that is mankind like all other life continues to go forward and proliferate and multiply and expand and radiate out and it keeps looking out into the heavens and it keeps wanting to build taller and it keeps wanting to go into the micro nanobiology of existence and it keeps you know and so at the very very soul of our uh, of our core of our being is not a contradiction it is there is uh, emanation there is not a, a bad versus good fight or anything like that there is something that is we're evolving we're going forward as all life forms are going forward and, and good is growing and maturing and feeding nurturing itself and you know exhausting the the um, the propellant of life until we die um so the very first point or the very first source is love is giving um and afterwards we can describe what happens to that love what through uh, engagements with uh, our, our society with the elements and uh, each other and then all of a sudden we are faced with situations that cause reactions and then 
we start seeing negative defenses, fear, and fear evolved into the species, and it seems to be ingrained in the very core of our being, suspicion, and, and so a lot of people think that we are, we come from fear and suspicion, we've got to fight it, but in reality, no, it all happened to love, it all happened to um, the first always never-ending uh, burning of fuel that continues beyond the earth, which is our advancement, our evolution, unless a meteor hits the earth or something like that, um, we will continue on. And so, um, let's see, I don't want to get lost here. Oh, right. And so we have, and, and we, our creature, our condition is that we have this intelligence that seems to not, seems to not quite harmonize with us. Um, everything else that we do seems to be part of the creature, the primitive creature that is a, a more evolved simian, it seems, of the family of the simians and the apes. Um, perhaps we were created out of many animals, you know, but in, in any case, there seems to be a base, and there is this relationship with an intelligence that we obviously uh, cannot have it because it, we keep we keep letting it hurt us. We uh, invent things that run us over, cars, and we create foods that uh, end up being bad for us. Uh, we uh, create chemicals and, and and dirty our own water and air, and we kill our own babies in wars, and we invent a gun for <laughs> for crying out loud, <laughs> you know, instead of inventing. Uh, uh, a drug that will cure all diseases, we invent a gun. And so something about this intelligent uh, prowess, this, this precocious intelligence we have, seems to be a challenge. Or, or we, and, and we haven't seen it as such yet, because at least if we had seen it as a challenge to our own survival, perhaps we would be doing things a little better. But uh, this only explains the initial condition of our species. The, the 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 setup sort of the way we have been left on this earth like in order to explain something and so we were unaware of this we continue on and we can't help but you know uh, feel and live this superior intelligence as part of as an extension as as us as a part of us we don't see a relationship or a difference like i'm starting to explain here and so we the world has gone on uh building and destroying betraying uh poisoning you know ourselves uh hoping for things that we we say we want to start doing and then in reality we do the opposite we keep getting betrayed by ourselves but have at some point um, it seems I would. It it seems logical that the existential or the philosophical question arose at some point. That first time a parent sent their son to war, and while at war, um, maybe that son came back. Um, with the opposite army, let's just say, I can't think of a better example right now, but ended up killing the family, or um, in order to keep the the, fam the family's wealth, uh, a betrayal occurred, and that person, you know, got in cahoots with somebody else and came and killed uh, the brother, right? There's a story in the Bible there, but uh, it's not coming to mind right now. And so... Um, logically the question will be how is that possible because i am love first i only know things that will be true to me and to the to the 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 whole of the species and the recognition of the same as as love and evolution and creation maintains the species and the collective together be above other things in, in life in life, the collective the, is what comes first. The, you know, evolution and creation does not think of, I am going to create one tree and then make many trees. No, trees arise together. 
all everything arises as a collective in evolution and creation and um, they nurture the individuals which are created from the collective a baby becomes what the world parent society everything taught him to think and be like and so that that individual actually is a result of the world and the society that surrounded him as he was growing up and so are we we are a first a collective we certainly don't act like it but we uh, definitely are and if any one of us would be taken out into the desert and separated from the rest of we would start wilting away wouldn't we well maybe we'd learn to survive but compare that to somebody who's uh, you know ecstatically existing in the city with a bunch of different activities and raising a family and going to school and having lots of friends and meetings and dinners and blah, 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 and all that comes forth from that person who writes books and, and gives speeches and everything. That's a living human being, right? Uh, in an exaggerated sense. And so really the species is not meant to be alone and, and, and kind of peter off into the desert. Uh, that's not our any, any species. Everything is meant to be in collective with the rest. Um, and so, okay, now I am getting a little lost. Um, so, right, so the human being, the parents or the, the friend or whoever who witnesses the first contradiction of the same species betraying or stealing or destroying what his best friend did or what his brother did or or acting against society, let's say, in a way that makes absolutely no sense uh, because he's a man, because he's a father, because he's a brother and he's not acting like the other thousands and millions of fathers and sons. And we start seeing, when we started beholding these betraying contradictions, somebody must have asked themselves, how is this possible? Why? Why is love not is it finding something that that's just not supposed to happen in fact it is impossible to accept we because our very source nature is to continue forward living and proliferating and evolving and expanding we don't recognize um something that goes against head on directly it's almost like when you were in love and you can uh you were convinced and both that both of you were so in love and the hurt of betrayal when you see your lover with somebody else and then they look at you like saying what do you want you know that you think i actually loved you and that is just like a dagger that goes into you um it's almost something like that we cannot accept it because in fact what happens lovers go crazy they go and kill they kill the person in the bed or um you know, it, it does, all of a sudden harmony <laughs> goes to hell and love cannot accept this. It, it's this, um, you know, now in the case of the lovers and the betrayal, uh, it's, it's probably the most natural uh, to, the, to the living primitive species, animal species that we are, it's probably the most okay of all examples. But what is not okay is that we would we would be all right with another father coming into our house and shooting my children because there is a war going on or something that doesn't we can never quite accept that so um and we grow used to it and we are sort of trained by the passing of events in history to and history to believe that that's how the world is but in reality something can never be fully accepted this is something can never be fully accepted and so at some point somebody had to explain because what happens is that as we know the human mind when they have a problematic question that has no answer uh, sort of a fault a split uh, a split a shift uh, in in the fabric of, of harmony and understanding and we have a question that's unanswered and it becomes important we have to answer it we kind of never it never sits right to not answer it we have to answer all questions um, and um, 
that question was answered. Somebody had to explain that there is um, a God that simply made us with a, a, a woe, uh, a, a, um, a pity, a defect that needs a challenge. Somehow we needed a story that said, oh, well, God knows why. When we created these stories of God or the story, this narrative, uh, this religion explains why this happened, and that story usually involves there are evil people. There are those that go against God. There are those that have to, that are that have not risen to the occasion of bettering themselves. Uh, now all of a sudden this um, paradox, this paradigm is explainable. What love could not accept as reason, because it, it is indeed um, unharmonious to life. It is in fact a state of constant unbalance that we have been created or we find ourselves in, let's say. Um, and so, um, this is not unnatural, it's sort of like a gift. This is how I see it. The price for the gift of having such an intelligence that would keep us from all harm the weather or the earth might cause us biologically through diseases or flies or the um, illnesses we can cure. We have the intelligence to conquer biology uh, and defend her and we have no enemies. So in a sense there is a gift. We should never suffer hunger. We should never be cold. And we, we even have the intelligence to design a civilization where our death can be peaceful. And like there would be no death and it's funny how a lot when you when you go into what I call the pragmatist ex existential pragmatic theorem let's just call it a lot of things seem to be echoed in scripture I found I can't all simultaneously remember everything right now but um, once you draw this this uh, logical structure out at other times, maybe casually thinking about it at another moment, you go, wow, that's just how, that's just what the Bible says. Uh, there will be no more death and da 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 because God and, and what is, you know. Um, and of course, I could get into answering what God then would be in reality and what how God can be understood, the notion uh, of God be understood. But I don't want to get into that because what is important right now is to explain why we started on a left foot kind of thing because we needed an answer to a situation that was unavoidably uh, we were unavoidably unavoidably created this way with a stumbling with a, a propensity to trip but once aware that we're tripping because we have too much weight in that intelligence and that it goes against what our own nature would naturally be able to handle in order for our own survival and uh, healthy proliferation like any other normal creature in the universe would we have to with the price that we pay for having this intelligent super ability or capacity is to be sort of condemned to a constant unbalance and maybe this is why some religions talk a lot about focusing on balance because we live in a perpetual state of, of unbalance and propensity to fall trip and go against ourselves in other words and so if instead we instead we can replace what I'm, what I'm getting at is that the narrative of us being sinner born sinners or uh, you know need to find the evil person someone in the crowd always uh, because, um, you know, believing that God's on your side harmonizes with the core source in all of us, which is to know that we're good, to know that we are uh, giving and growing and nurturing and emanating and evolving and going forward. That gives us peace. 
and we explain the ills and evils that happen in the world by saying, well, God challenges, challenged us uh, because some people can't stop being evil or born evil. Some, you know, there's like uh, some contradicting stories there. Some people, uh, we're all, some religions will say that we're all equal in the eyes of God uh, and the people that falter and fall can be forgiven and can <laughs> straighten themselves. And at the same time, society is also saying some people are born evil because it's just easier. And it always goes to answering this original question. If we can understand, however, that um, there is no question to be answered, uh, we are both these things. Life and perpetual forward love giving light is at the very first source. And then we've been, we have this, you know, I always say we've been infused with or given or endowed with because um, it seems to have been either a gift from or a doing, an intentional doing by our creator so that we can do something great with ourselves. And maybe it's their pleasure to see how we we realize it finally and we do that and we we create a, our own paradise out of the world or maybe it is something that naturally happens in the universe uh occasionally once there is a a leading dominating species on a planet for long enough it does life does this sort of turbo leap and produces an intelligence. Adolescence kind of does that, you know. It kind of uh, has all of a sudden you, your voice <laughs> squeaks and your bones hurt because you're growing faster than normal. So it wouldn't. It would also be another possibility. But see, the fact that I can explain it as not an interference by our creators, but as maybe something that a world will do with its life, continues to reaffirm the closed theorem that um, where I can continue to say we were created to naturally do this or maybe we were not created the answer is not quest is not answered is not the question is never answered of their existence of God's existence and that is actually very spiritual um, there's a part in the Torah that says God created himself out of the hollow in the universe right and that is very visually explicit it means uh you know i exist but i don't exist because there's no way you could know what that hollow was before i carved it out of there so forget about me in fact other parts of scripture said say forget about me don't even think about me and so um it seems that this pragmatic sort of scientific pseudoscientific explanation would also agree if we interpret scripture the, in these right by these ways with things that scripture says um, and of course that leads us to something marvelous which is saying well there is no bad people we cause everything to each other we abandon our children treat them badly we give them bad examples they have a necessity that we're not realizing or acknowledging when they're babies. Uh, it's all within our realm, and that means that we could continue, uh, we could unlock and unblock the fixed world as we have believed it needs to stay designed this way and take make a leap with all our sciences, human sciences of every kind, uh, and de dedicate ourselves start looking at the world as a, a, a just one species instead of all our little problems which are uh, these segregations and differences about not agreeing you know not agreeing with the other is is uh, basically a decision to to not acknowledge that that not acknowledge not have the other person acknowledge that you don't understand them there, I was having this argument with somebody else, uh, with somebody on Facebook, and I was telling them, you know, and actually, argument is not natural. We think that social, is na it's, it's natural, but it's not required. And in fact, if, you, if we wanted to, if our intention was truly to grow and find truth together, which 
is what supposedly the argument proposes is for somebody at least to one of the two to get to truth and what we both really wanted was to get to truth theoretically we could say wait it sounds like to me what you're saying sounds like this and the other person says oh no that's not what i meant what i meant is this oh okay i understand it now and the, you know and the conversation would uh, slow down a great deal <laughs> but in in reality there is no necessity to lock in disputes in different opinions and fights and arguments and neither do the countries of the world it seems that it seems all of it all of it stems from this original belief that we are destined we're born in sin or some people are born bad and therefore i have good to go side with and no reason to believe that that still non-baptized sinner or that person that was born bad or, or has too much karma that he's paying has to necessarily be part of my world and since the, the world was built on that instead of starting from unity constant unity never not never anybody not thinking that we were all one species of the same being the same the same species individual being we were never not the same being instead we started on the story of uh that ex needed to explain and thus gave us the story or the the explanation that we so needed that there are those that are not of the same they're not with the good they're with the bad they're not with god they're with it they're not right they're ignorant they're you know we, um when in reality the first true thought is that uh we're never not the same as the other and whatever i don't understand of the other person saying or motives for what they're doing has simply all to do with the different language distance not knowing each other well enough having grown up in different societies whatever the case may be but the first thought is always that we are the same and then if something is breaking that a whole first truth it is simply something we ignore and can be learned there is no given that we are uh, from the start separate that from the start separate was created early 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 on by needing to answer the question that made no sense to love uh, and, and to unity and to sameness how can this be happening how can somebody come and burn down my village that makes no sense i need to understand it, it, it makes no sense to any living creature in the world nothing does that to itself <laughs> no animals no trees this makes no sense to life and so the narratives were created to say okay okay well i can handle that this was god's will this is what i'm faced with some people and so separation was started from as the first answer the first answer was a non-question was that we have always been the same now we didn't start there we started with the other with the separation and so the whole world turned out to be different um through a pragmatic um uh, existential scientific call it logic you can actually replace you can weave into all the way back and reach into that very first question switch it and then everything that comes afterwards all of a sudden is told completely differently uh, global revisionism everything is told differently uh, the reason why people walked away from each other and went to other parts of the world the reason why um we didn't understand the, these social philosophies why these people started doing that and these others started believing they were enemies everything would get retold of course we can't we don't have history recorded to be able to do global revisioning revisionism but we can from wherever we can 
um, retell the story, the history of the world, if, if some people will be interested in that. But most importantly, we can see it differently from now on. From from now on, we can it can be seen differently, the world. And uh, in other words, there is no reason, there is no logical reason, although we in the subconsciously we think there is a reason, it all goes back to this that I dis that I described. But there is actually there is actually no reason to think that we are uh, that would give substance to uh, being separate from others. We are not. No matter what language we speak or what we look like, uh, we are the same human being. And therefore, since we have all the same needs, and it doesn't matter really what political system we have, because Political systems are just a, a system, a method through which to administrate a country. It's really not a big deal. It's, it makes no sense to, to, if you think about it, why should we fight and go to war over how to run, you know, don't get involved with me then, run your own country. If you, why do you have to change mine? You know, nothing, the world would start looking completely different um, once you turn that first source mistake and it was a mistake and it was perhaps a mistake that was necessary because at that time we didn't collectively have uh, the critical mass of high scientific uh, technological intelligence that the world has today I mean anybody today can uh, can look at a car and know that it will roll if nobody stops it down the hill right no matter what desert you're living in Africa, everybody knows that. They'll look at a car and, oh, that car will keep rolling. But if during, before the invention of the wheel, you might look at a car and you're not, you, they would not have been sure what it was going to do. So collectively, we have gotten to maybe where we're ready to, uh, and in, the, in the social sciences or in the philosophies of spiritual intellect, I don't know. Uh, be able to go back to this origin and um, change that mistake. Um, it was intentional. It is intentional that we have uh, an intelligence that is uh, too big for us. <laughs> it, we we can't we can't button this jacket. It, it's we have to leave it open. And life and existence is about the constant challenge in doing all the great promises that this intelligence uh, now suddenly can become the gift that it is. We can use it to uh, keep the species warm and safe and happy <laughs> uh, better than any animal around here can. And we can even take care of them. We can even cure their diseases and make sure that <laughs> if we wanted to, we could make sure that they, they didn't get any diseases and that they had food and didn't attack each other and they didn't fear each other. We could actually create out of the world the Jehovah Promised Land um, because uh, we have that capacity <laughs> if we order ourselves um, correctly and acknowledge that we have to bear this uh, intelligence that if we don't stay vigilant, if we stop caring for some people, some people will suffer because we can't extend all our uh, loving reasoning naturally to everybody um, naturally <laughs> we we're always we must always never re never forget that um, this 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 greater intelligence that we have is not really uh, harmonizing with our natural limitations we have to make a conscious effort to use it to under to use that intelligence for our own good and that we can do we can do but we we have to uh, think of it as such um, and anyways I, I hope it was clear um, this took longer than I, I was expecting but I um, you know I don't know how else to end there's so many tangents so many different areas that it, it grows out you know from here to other areas but maybe if there's some good responses to uh, 
to this. I forgot to plug in the microphone. I hope it, it came out okay. Um, then maybe we can make, um, you know, uh, different chapters, different areas, tangents, because it does op uh, the same inherit, um, how can I say this? The, uh, the same formula, uh, I, I, um, the same premise kind of transforms anything that you want to talk about uh, in any direction. So anyways, but this is kind of like the, a, big, a big area of the basic, of the, of the fundamental zone of, of this, I don't know what it is, kind of thinking is cool thought, I don't even know. It's all pure logic. It's all pure logic, you know, and that, that's this is why I'm sharing it is because I'm hoping that uh, Yeah, some people have said it's a kind of a new religion But then uh, you have to understand religion religion kind of is what I, it was explaining Was necessary to create for an unanswered question, but if the question is answered About our imperfect or un perpetually unbalanced and unstable predicament the religion maybe would be a of a different nature for the first time a religion that says well religions kind of do that don't they but except that they always you know how to how to how to deal with the toiling right but it kind of says because god played this on us and we just can't do anything about it and so we it continues to lead us to look for the bad guys to look for, which results in people that they don't go by this religion, do they? So they, there we go, some, we have some bad guys. So no religion so far has universally had a, a unifying theorem to where it explains the predicament of any everybody beyond, beyond uh, um, an interpretation, beyond an interpretation, beyond uh, a, a, a one way of looking at it uh, or one kind of story or narrative this is uh, would ostentate I don't know if you can say ostentate to be a global single and only story if it were a religion so I don't know if it can be called a religion um, but I think like my art teachers used to say more important what what's most important is the process is that you get in there and you just start slapping away with the tools and the paintbrushes and the drawings and you, you don't think about what anything you just see where learning that took you to do you know took you to learn the following day and I'm happy with that <laughs> I don't know well I'm looking forward to your thoughts and solely I'm sorry it took so long I hope it was worth it at least for a few of you uh, so long and ciao from Italy right now, um, for now, so in case anybody wants to know where I'm, where am I, I'm here with my dog sleeping on the bed behind me, ciao.